So I guess the ultimate question is, uh, why are so many people here from all over the world to play a board game? Mike and I have the same answer to this question. The people. You have people who you only see a couple times a year, if you're lucky at that. And the international you see every other year. People say, why do you go? Go and meet the people. Diplomacy is secondary. These people are, are fantastic. They're just the... I think it's something, I think it's, my analogy that I often use is that of hockey. If you look at professional sports players, the, the more brutal the sport, except for possibly boxing, the nicer the people. The more friendly the sport, the meaner the people. Baseball players, total jerks. The sport is like, they never even get anywhere near each other. Hockey players often are really swell guys. They, they are... They, it's, it's just like diplomacy. You it's get, exactly the same you, thing. You get right in with elbows, and you're standing over the board, and you can feel the vibrations off the other person's and body as they're concentrating. And lying and cheating and stabbing and, just, and hating and, each other. And as soon as you walk away from the board, you go have a beer. Like let's go buy a beer. Let's go. We'll have fun. Let's, let's go. Fifteen people stay at my house, and only three that I had met before. Exactly. It's <laughs> like when I first met Dave Molesky, who has run tournaments on the East Coast. He picked me up at my house that he'd never met me before, drove me five hours into Vermont from Boston, was really tired, decided he needed to fall asleep. Doug Massey, who I'd never met before, wasn't even at his house, left the door open to his house, said, had a note on the door saying, there's a bedroom open, there's beer in the fridge, the, this is how you use the remote. Dave had to go to bed, so he's like, here's the keys to my car, go watch a movie, I'm really tired, it's only 9 p.m., we're gonna play tomorrow. I'd never met either of them before. Dave's asleep. I'm in this guy's house. Drinking his beer. And drinking his beer. And he's like, well, I can either drink the beer or I can go out and watch a movie. And he's giving me the keys to his car. These guys are really swell guys. It's, it's just... Once you start playing with them, if you like this, if you like the game, it's great. I know lots of people that would be great at the game. And just, it just doesn't click with them. It's just not their style. But if you can like the game, once you get to know the people, it's just this fantastic experience where you can play with them for years and work with them, fight them, you, hate them, love them. You have, you have you a good time. time. No, French and I just come back from sea and I get this email. Hey, there's a big diplomacy convention out in Baltimore, Maryland. Why don't you come out, Mike? Okay. So I went out and stayed with a guy who I never met before, only through emails. And I sit down and they don't know me for a minute. They said, oh, you're from Canada. And Jim Yerke, who was the tournament director, he said, you came all the way for Canada just for this? I said, yeah, why not? And he laughed. And first thing he said, let's go have a drink and talk about it. That's and they're good guys. They had a social round on the Saturday night. Uh, blind gumbo gamer. It's just all fun and giggles and laughs. And they said, uh, Mike, you sit, you sit with these guys. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, I see names like I ordered Chris Martin. Shit, Chris Martin just won World last year. And David Hood and all these people in my eyes are going bigger and I said, oh shit, I'm in trouble now. I'm just going to sit in the back. No one will notice me. But the exact opposite thing happened. Hey, Mike, come on. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, they made you feel like home. They didn't know me. Nobody. And it's just like people showing up here. Um, like Mike is a great example of a person who just comes into the hobby and take into him. He said, I can't believe you guys are sad. In a game setting, no game beats this. What would they call it? Thinking Man Swiss without dice. No, no, not at all. Oh, yes. No, I say half no. the hobby thinks that. They, they, it's just a, it's a it's flawed the, analogy. It, it's the mathematics. The flawed analogy. The, no, what I say is, so who was it? I think it was Manus Hand that said, the game is really like the TV show Survivor. Take, for a popular analogy, take the TV show Survivor, where you're voting people off the island, mix it with a little bit of chess strategy with seven people on the island. Mm -hmm. That's diplomacy. It's not risk. Take a, risk is like this weird rolling dice and things explode and people get big and no one allies. You don't ally with people in risk. This diplomacy is all about the people. Diplomacy, like risk, you don't really play about the people. Partly you do, but... Yeah, but when you mention diplomacy, it's about, oh, just like risk. That analogy comes to 90% of the general population. It does, because it looks the same. It's a board with a bunch of countries and you have little pieces that just move around. But it's not what it's about. It's Survivor. You could take away a board. You could just play in the ether and just say, okay, 
I, I, I've actually wanted to do this for a long time. Have like a group of seven people that have played it so well that they just know where everything is, and we play a verbal game. There's no pieces anyway. You just say, okay. Um, What's done that? Driving from North Carolina to Baltimore, and he's driving, and everybody else has the board in the back, and he does it off his mouth. Totally. That's, see, that's, that's, you don't need the board. The board is just there for as a prop. Risk, the board is the game. That's why I say, really, it's like TV show Survivor with a little bit of chess tactics because people that are tactically amazing, they can get away with some boneheaded di diplomatic discussions.